What's going on ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to today's installment of Renegades Reviews. I'm the Renegade J.J. Williams, here to bring you my thoughts on yet another Christmas movie. Today I'm going to be talking about the sequel to yesterday's review. Today I'm going to be discussing Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, released in 1992. One year after Kevin was left home alone and had to defeat a pair of bumbling burglars, he accidentally finds himself in New York City, and the same criminals are not far behind. This movie brings back the majority of the original cast, Macaulay Culkin, Joe Pesci, Daniel Stern, John Hurd, Catherine O'Hara. But then we get Tim Curry, Brenda Fricker, Eddie Bracken, Rob Schneider, and even cameos by Ali Sheedy and Donald Trump. Now, in my personal opinion, this is one of the rare sequels that I feel exceeds the original. Continuity issues notwithstanding. Because in the original Home Alone, Kevin is an 8-year-old. In Home Alone 2, he's a 10-year-old. Yet, multiple times throughout the movie, and specifically when the parents are talking to the Miami Police Department, they say that the same thing happened last year. Which means that this is only a year later, so how did Kevin age two years instead of one? Biggest continuity issue. Well, instead of Paris this time, the family's supposed to take a vacation to Florida and everything all the same shenanigans pretty much happen the power gets doesn't go out but the alarms accidentally get unplugged so they miss the alarm so they have to rush however this time Kevin is actually on the van to the airport he remembered himself and this was after being taunted by his older brother at the Christmas pageant, defending himself, the brother gives a BS apology. Kevin, being the boy that he is, can't believe that his parents fall for it, tells them that it was a BS apology, and yet, and still, he is the asshole in it all. So he gets confined to the third floor once again, like I said, the alarms accidentally get unplugged. They miss the alarm. However, Ken, Kevin remembers himself and gets onto the van so that he doesn't miss the flight and the vacation this time. However, the family gets separated at the airport. Understandable, airports are insane any time of year, especially to ho during the holidays and especially in the major airports like Chicago O'Hare, where these movies take place. These all take these movies both take place in the Chicago area. O'Hare Airport is one of the busiest airports there is. So they get separated. Kevin gets on a flight to New York. The rest of the family gets on a flight to Florida. They don't realize that he's not there until they claim their bags at bag check. And Kevin, using his resources... And the fact that he had his dad's backpack because he was trying to find batteries for his talk boy Walkman <clears throat> decides to check himself into the Plaza Hotel. Tim Curry is the concierge there. Rob Schneider is a bellhop. We see Donald Trump in the lobby just walking by. That's a brief cameo. Kevin asks him how to get to the lobby and he directs him. And then the antics begin to ensue. Because eventually, the credit cards are reported stolen. Which means that when they try to run the card at the hotel, it gets declined. That's how the family discovers where Kevin is. Because they canceled the credit card, realizing that Kevin had it. So that they could try to get a lock on him. And instead of taking separate flights, the family all gets the next flight out to New York. 
and goes on a mad search to try to find Kevin. Kevin, of course, has been scared at this point because the hotel is trying to stop him from credit card fraud. He gets away, ends up meeting the pigeon lady in the park, played by Brenda Fricker. Some of you guys might remember her from other roles. She was the foster mother in Angels in the Outfield. She was in A Time to Kill. Um, wonderful performance by her, and it's the relationship that she forges with Kevin that I think makes me enjoy this movie more than the original. Yeah, in the original, you've got the creepy next-door neighbor that everyone thinks kills people, and his relationship to Kevin, but I don't think that that relationship develops and becomes as meaningful as the Pigeon Ladies and Kevin. Kevin also stumbles into Ed, um, Duncan's toy chest, big toy store in New York City, discovers that all the money that is brought in on Christmas Eve is going to go to a local children's hospital, and that's where the wet bandits, now sticky bandits, Harry and Marv come into play, because they're going to rob Duncan's toy chest and steal all that money. Of course, Kevin gets wind of it, formulates a plan to stop them, succeeds. The mom, Catherine O'Hara, is out pounding the streets, trying to find her son, comes upon a couple of cops who she talks to briefly about it. And the, first, the cops are like, ma'am, we'll handle it. If you file a police report, there's not a whole lot you can do. It's one of the biggest cities in New York. You're trying to find a needle in a haystack. And then it hits her. Kevin had mentioned at the beginning of the film his love of Christmas trees. Rockefeller Center. So the cops take her there. And they find Kevin. And everyone lives happily ever after. Again, great, great Christmas movie. A must-watch every holiday for me, more so than the original. What do you guys think of Home Alone 2 Lost in New York? Do you agree that it's better the, than the original? Do you disagree? Let me know. Leave your thoughts in the comment box below. Tweet them to me at R-O-W-J-J Williams. Let me know what movies you'd like for me to discuss and review come January 1st when we get away from the Christmas movies. And until tomorrow, right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel on Renegades Reviews, I am the Renegade J.J. Williams, and I will talk to each and every one of you once again tomorrow.